Happy Easter. Please stand and sing with us. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my till I met you I was breathing but not alive all my failures I've tried to hide it was my tomb till I met
It's nine o'clock. It's good to see everybody here on this glorious uh, Easter morning. Um, I tell you, we have had quite a holy week around here at our church. Uh, we had a beautiful, spectacular Monday Thursday service here in our sanctuary on Thursday night. And then on Friday, we joined our friends in the village and we carried a cross through Sewickley and ended up in the Lutheran Church for a beautiful ecumenical service as well. And so we have, we have done well in bearing witness this week to the cross of Jesus Christ. But I tell you, my friends, we bear witness to the cross of Jesus Christ not just on Monday, Thursday, and not just on Good Friday, but all the time. 
We bear witness to the cross when, when we say to ourselves, oh my gosh, I just shouldn't have done what I did, or I shouldn't have said what I said, or I shouldn't have pressed send on that sort of nasty email that I sent out. We bear witness to the cross every time we come to Christ together and confess our sins. So let's do that now this morning on Easter morning as we confess our sins using our corporate prayer of confession. And then I will leave a few moments for your silent confession as well. So let's come to the cross praying. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. And now a moment of silent confession. Amen. Friends, the Gospel of John tells the Easter story in many ways. Uh, but in chapter 3, it says this. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only Son, that anybody who believes in him will never perish, but will have eternal life. Friends, this is the good news of Easter. This is the good news of the Gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
please be seated. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and good morning. Happy Easter as we gather together for worship here at Swickley Presbyterian Church, those of you who are in the sanctuary and those who are worshiping with us online. Um, as we gather for worship today, there's a lot happening in the life of our church. I want to share with you some of the things that are coming up. But first, uh, let's stop and look back at uh, something that, that just happened. Uh, if you remember, a couple weeks ago, I asked our church uh, to, to bring hard-boiled eggs. I asked anyone who was able to bring a half a dozen eggs for our uh, children's egg hunt last week. And you responded, and we had more than 28 dozen hard-boiled eggs... Added to the plastic candy-filled eggs, we had more than a thousand eggs last week. And uh, so uh, you can see the pictures of our egg hunt. Uh, the children of our church and our community and our preschool uh, gathered together. They had a blast doing crafts and hunting for eggs. And I even heard tell that some of them re-hid them and re-hunted for the eggs last week. So it was a wonderful day, uh, a wonderful event for our children's ministry. Um, and I think it's important for us just to step back and realize that when we support children's ministry, good things happen. And so uh, it, when we hear those calls for children's ministry, please continue to support our children's ministry and watch what Jesus is doing in the lives of the youngest members of our community. On a not unrelated note, Vacation Bible School is July 29th this year. And so I'm hopeful that we are able to have as much support for Vacation Bible School uh, as we did for our egg hunt, uh, which comes up July 29th to August 2nd. Uh, so that was last week. Uh, this coming Sunday, next Sunday is a, is a big day in the life of our church. We have several big events. Uh, so let's start with the morning. So next Sunday morning, 10 o'clock downstairs in Ansby Hall, uh, we've got a, a new series for our adult education. Um, all of our adult classes are going to join together as we welcome uh, Reverend Dr. John Burgess. Uh, Dr. Burgess is a professor at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, and he has spent most of the last two decades studying about and studying in Eastern Europe and Russia. And so Dr. Burgess is going to be coming with us uh, to talk to us about how God is at work in the war in Ukraine uh, for the next several weeks. And we will begin that uh, next Sunday at 10 o'clock in Ansby. Uh, so I hope you're able to join us uh, for a very timely, uh, powerful presentation from Dr. Burgess. Then, uh, at noon, we're going to have a congregational meeting to make some changes to our bylaws. We haven't made a whole lot of changes to our bylaws in over 10 years, and it's, it's time to make some of those changes. So Session has uh, made some recommendations, and we will vote on those uh, at noon uh, for our congregational meeting uh, next Sunday. You are able to uh, join that uh, virtually if you can't be here in person. And uh, you should get an email, if, uh, if it's not in your email already tomorrow, explaining those changes and kind of walking you through them uh, by laws are a lot to handle in person. Uh, so we've got our adult ed class at 10, our congregational meeting at noon, and then uh, in the evening, uh, many of you are aware that we are taking a, a pilgrimage to Ireland. And so uh, a number of you have already signed up for that trip to Ireland uh, this fall. And our, um, our first meeting is going to be uh, next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. So if you are signed up for the trip, make sure to check your email for the link. Uh, that'll be a virtual meeting where we'll meet the tour guide and hear about the things that are coming up uh, for the Ireland trip uh, next Sunday. Then on the 13th, we have an, uh, another new member class. Um, I'm told that this is going to be a, a particularly large new member class. So if you or someone you know has uh, been interested in joining our church, this is a great opportunity uh, to get together at noon on uh, Saturday the 13th, uh, learn about our church and, and, and how we work, meet some of our elders, and then join the church uh, on the 14th. Um, also, as, you, as we gather for worship on Easter Sunday, uh, the flowers are always so overwhelming and so beautiful. And thank you to all of you who work to make those uh, happen. But also, you'll notice uh, there are uh, some little booklets uh, at the doors. I encourage you to grab one of these booklets. Uh, these list all the names of the people uh, in whose memory we have given the flowers this year. There's no chance I can read them all. There are hundreds of names here. Uh, these are the people that have gone before us and have enabled us to be where we are. And so as we worship on Easter Sunday, Day, we remember them, we give thanks to them, and we memorialize them in flowers. Uh, you'll also see their names scrolling during the offertory. And mentioning those flowers, after worship, if you would like, you can head into the Robinson Room. There are more flowers in there. And we invite you to grab some of the flowers from the Robinson Room. There are plastic sleeves for you to uh, put those in to take home. And you can take some of those flowers home with you uh, from the Robinson Room after our worship service. 
Uh, so uh, as you can see, there's, there's a lot happening in the life of our church. Uh, there is so much more in youth ministry, in children's ministry, in our mission projects, in our discipleship ministry, with membership. We spend so much time in our staff meetings trying to trim down the announcements so that we don't spend all morning talking about what's coming. So let me just say to you, there is a lot happening in our church. Be a part of it. Uh, find a way to, to plug into the ministry of this church. Uh, keep an eye on your website, uh, on the website, on your email, and, uh, and join in in the many adventures, uh, many events coming in the weeks and months ahead for our congregation. But at this point, I think that's enough uh, for us this morning. And so now I invite the children to come forward and join uh, Pastor Emily Miller at the front of the sanctuary for our children's sermon. Come on down, kids. I know there's lots of you here. I can hear you. We can sit on the floor right here. Plenty, 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 plenty of room right here on the floor. Come on down. Oh, my goodness. I see the girls in their pretty dresses, even bunnies on that dress. Oh, my goodness. Come on down to all my young friends. All right, look, there is plenty of room on the floor right here, right here. Just park it right here. Yeah, there's eggs up there. All right, just sit down. Come on down. All right, it's so good to see you all on Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. I was wondering, if you were listening to, to Pastor Derek talk just a minute ago, there were pictures on the screen of our egg extravaganza, egg excitement last Sunday on Palm Sunday. Who was there? Who went? You girls went? You girls went? Yeah, yeah. You didn't go? Okay, well, maybe next year you can go. Go ahead. Yes, there's a crown on our... Yeah, that was, an, that was another children's sermon we did, right? With the crown on, on the pyramid there. Absolutely. All right, but I know a lot of you were there at the egg extravaganza filled with egg excitement last week. Um, and you did lots of stuff, right? You, you searched for eggs and, and you colored eggs, right? And I bet you ate a few eggs, maybe a few candy eggs. So does anybody know why we use eggs as a symbol for Easter? Does anybody know that? Try it out. Go ahead. You forgot? All right. Well, if you, if you remember, let me know. Anybody know why we use eggs as a symbol for Easter? Why do you think? Because Easter is full of eggs, absolutely. Now I tell you, I'll tell you why we use eggs. So think about, think about if you're in the woods and you come across a nest of a bird and there's little eggs in there. What's going to happen in that? They're going to hatch. This is exactly right. Are you? Were you going to say they're going to hatch? Yeah. And baby birds are going to come out. Exactly. See, you all get it. So we use eggs as a symbol for Easter because, because new life comes out of eggs, right? Like, like baby birds do, okay? Yeah, that's why we use it. Now, now, eggs, the eggs that we use at Easter are usually filled with something, right? Aren't they usually filled with something? Not, not a baby bird, not a baby bird. But what, candy? They're filled with candy. Toys sometimes, what else? Chocolate is in the eggs. And little squishies are in there, absolutely. And sometimes if you're, if you're coloring a real egg, you open it up and then there's that, like the yellow yolk in there, right, that you can eat and then the white part of the egg, right? E eggs, eggs are usually filled with something, especially Easter eggs. All right, now I brought you all some eggs. Now I want each, you can each take one. Okay, just take one. Make sure we get one. How do you want to have an egg? All right. We will each take an egg, and if you want, you can open it up and see what's in it, or you can wait until later. Girls, did you get one? All right, I probably should have gotten a helper with this. <laughs> All right, let's make sure that everybody gets one. There we go. One egg a piece, and when you open it, tell me what's in there. Here we go. I'm going to pass them on. Gonna pass them. All right, who who has opened theirs? Anybody open? What's in there? I got my jelly beans and starburst. Right, so it's candy. Oh my gosh! See what I mean? Like when we get Easter eggs. Did you get that in yours? Did you get jelly beans in yours? Okay. See what I mean? Easter eggs. When we open them up, there's usually something in there. 
Now, you know what, I think I, I'd like an Easter egg, all right? I, I mean, I gave them all to you, so I'd like one. Let's, I'm gonna check in the mailbox, okay? I'm gonna check in the mailbox and see if there's an egg for me in there. All right. <gasps> there is, there is. There's an egg for me in the mailbox. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I wonder what's in my egg. What do you think's in here? Jelly beans and Starburst, maybe, maybe, chocolate, maybe. All right, I'm going to open it up. You ready? One, two, three. I'm going to open up. <laughs> you knew it. You knew it. What's in my egg? There's nothing in there. Oh, my goodness. I'm kind of sad and I'm kind of disappointed because I thought we just said that Easter eggs are the symbol of Easter and that there's always something in there. I mean, how, how can this be an East? Aw, oh, thank you. Thank you, sweetie. You've given me your Starburst. Thank you. That's very, that's very sweet. That's very sweet. You girls can have those. Thank you. All right, how can this be an Easter egg when it's empty? Huh? All right, go ahead, try. Maybe that's when Jesus came back from the dead. Uh-huh. And what was empty when Jesus came back from the dead? His tomb or his grave. That's exactly right. So I think my egg is really the, the true Easter egg, isn't it? Because when I opened it, it was empty, just like, just like on that very, very first Easter, when Jesus' friends thought that Jesus was dead inside his grave or his tomb, as the boys told us the, the word for it, right? A tomb. His friends thought that he was dead. But then when they came to the tomb on that very first Easter, they saw that it was empty, right? The tomb was empty, which meant that God had made Jesus alive again, and that's why we have Easter, right? That's why we have it. Even though we love our eggs and our candy and our bunnies and all of that, we have Easter because on the very, very first Easter, people thought Jesus was dead, but God made him alive again, right? And that's what we sing about, and that's what we, we yell about and pray about on Easter, and that's what makes it so wonderful, okay? That God made Jesus alive. All right, well, thank you all for coming up, and let's have a very quick prayer, okay? And then you can go out with Miss Hannah. Let's pray. Oh, great. God, we thank you for Easter. We thank you for the fun that we have at Easter, and we thank you mostly that you made Jesus alive again to show us how much you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all did really good. I just love the trash in the. All right, go ahead. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes to us from the end of Matthew's gospel. We'll be reading the Easter story as we find it in Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. But before we go to God's word, let's first go to God in prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, as we come before you this day, we ask that your spirit would be with us in this room or wherever we are. We come to you from different places and different experiences of this week, and we ask that you would guide us as we hear your word. We ask that you would set aside any of the regrets or concerns from this past week. That you would uh, hold for us any anxiety or excitement about the week to come. And that in this moment you would give us the gift of this moment. You would let us focus on you. That we might learn how wonderful this world is. That we might learn how you work. That we might learn who we can be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. Listen to the word of God. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards stood and became like dead men. 
But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, as we reflect on the gift of your word this day, we ask that you would be here with us. We ask that you would be with us wherever we are, and that you might speak to us, and that we might hear your voice in your word. We ask that you would show us who you are. You would show us the beauty of the creation around us. And that you would show us who you have created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go quickly and tell the disciples. Now this is, this is the angel's message to Mary. That go quickly. And tell the disciples. And that's exactly what Mary did. As Mary heard this invitation, she turned and she ran. She ran to the people she knew. She ran to the people she loved. She ran to the people with whom she had shared her life to tell them what happened to her on that morning. That morning, that morning became the morning. And it was, it was through that day that Mary saw every other day. That was the day that, that Mary came to understand just how beautiful the world really is. That was the day that Mary, uh, Mary learned how God works. And that was the day that Mary, Mary got a glimpse of who she could be. She got up uh, that morning. That morning, while it was still dark, she got up and she went to this place she expected to be deserted. And that may sound familiar to you. Uh, we've read that a few weeks ago. That's, that's what Jesus liked to do. Jesus liked to get up in the morning while it was still dark and go out to deserted places to find silence and find stillness. And so in that morning, Mary did what Jesus had done. Mary got up while it was dark and she went out to a place she expected to be deserted to find silence and stillness. But there was none to be found. Instead, when Mary got to that tomb, Matthew tells us that the, the earth itself began to move. Matthew tells us that the, the ground beneath her feet began to shake. There was an earthquake that morning as Mary headed to the tomb. And the, the same thing had happened just a few days before. As Jesus died, the earth began to shake. And in an echo of what happened at the crucifixion, the earth itself began to shift under her feet. In an echo of the crucifixion, all the people around her and the ground beneath her began to tremble, tremble, tremble. But this time... This time, something different was happening. The last time the earth began to shake, it's because Jesus was dying. And this morning, as the earth begins to shake beneath her feet, it's not Jesus who's dying, but death itself. And as Mary peers into the tomb, as Mary finds that the tomb is empty, in that instant, Mary comes face to face with, with the truth about creation. Mary discovered that death is temporary. It's life that is permanent. Mary discovered that, that hope will always overcome despair. 
In that moment, Mary discovered that grace washes away sin. Mary discovered that that love will overcome hatred. Mary discovered that peace will outlast violence. In that moment, as Mary peered into the tomb, she discovered the truth about creation, that it it is so much more beautiful than she could ever have imagined. That the way the world works, it's a world full of life. It's a world full of grace. It's a world full of peace. Mary discovered the truth about creation that it really is good as God pronounced on the first day as Mary peered into that tomb she learned how beautiful how wonderful how good creation really is and then she ran And the angel uh, told her it was time to go tell the disciples, to tell the people she knew, tell the people she loved, tell the people with whom she had shared her life. And so she turned and she ran. And she ran to get to the disciples. And as she sprinted, because there was nothing else to do, as she sprinted, she ran directly into Jesus himself. Jesus came to find Mary. Now, this is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is Mary, the follower of Jesus. Mary, the friend of Jesus. And as she was running to tell the disciples, Jesus came and met her and stepped in front of her and interrupted her journey. And Mary found herself staring into the face of her friend as she had done a thousand times before. Staring into the eyes of her teacher. And he, he was the same. This was the same person she had chosen to follow. It was the same person who had taught her. It's the same person she had heard preaching. And yet, he was was completely different. As Mary stared into his eyes, Mary was peering into the eyes of God. God from God, light from light, very God from very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made. Mary was peering into the eyes of the almighty creator. Mary was peering into the eyes of the all-powerful commander of the armies of heaven. Mary was peering into the eyes of the one who had destroyed death. And as Mary looked into the eyes of God, Jesus asked for her help. Notice how bizarre that is. And Mary falls down at his feet and Jesus invites her to go ahead and bring the message before him. Jesus asks for Mary to carry the good news to the disciples. He asks for her help. He did not need it. He had just conquered death. If Jesus wanted to, he could have commanded a legion of angels to go before him and proclaim the message to the disciples. If he wanted to, he could have commanded the earth to tremble beneath their feet. If he wanted to, he could have thundered down from the sky speaking the good news to them. But instead, Jesus invited Mary to carry the message. He did not need her help, but he wanted it. Jesus gave Mary an opportunity to become part of the Easter story. Jesus invited Mary to become part of the blessing. Jesus invited Mary to become the bearer of the good news. And in that moment... Mary discovered something about the way that God works. God chooses us. God pursues us. God comes to meet us while we are running off to do whatever it is we are doing. God finds us and invites us into the blessing. Mary discovered something about how God works on that morning. And so she ran. She ran to tell the people she knew. She ran to tell the people she loved. She ran to tell the people with whom she shared her life. And maybe it was, maybe it was in the middle of that sprint that she caught a glimpse. A glimpse 
of who she could be. Every Easter, we tell Mary's story. And Mary has become undeniably, inextricably, unforgettably part of the Easter story. The Easter story is Mary's story. Mary's story is the Easter story. Jesus Christ invited Mary into the blessing and Mary joined her story to Christ's story. She joined her actions to Christ's actions. She joined her life to the life of Jesus. And now to tell the story of Mary is to tell the story of Jesus. And to tell the story of Jesus is to tell the story of Mary because she became part of the blessing. She became part of the joy. She became became part of the good news of the gospel. Mary became part of something so much bigger, so much better, so much longer lasting than she could ever have imagined. Mary became part of the gospel. Maybe in that moment she caught a glimpse of what she could become as she entered into the blessing. So she ran. She ran to tell the people she knew. She ran to tell the people she loved. She ran to tell the people with whom she shared her life because of what happened to her on that morning. What happened to her on this morning. That's why we're here. Uh, That's why we gather every Sunday, and that's why we gather on Easter Sunday in particular. That's why our entire church family comes together on this Sunday. We travel, we engage in so many things. It is so hard to get all of us together in the same room on the same day, but we pick this day because this is the day that we come to know how beautiful God's creation is. This is the day that we discovered how God works, and this is the day that we discover who we can be. Because Jesus invites you to become part of his story. Jesus doesn't need your help, but he wants it. Jesus invites you to be part of the blessing. Jesus invites you to be a part of the good news. Jesus invites you to be a part of the Easter story. Jesus invites you to be part of what God is doing in this world, what God is doing in this village, what God is doing in this neighborhood, what God is doing in this community. And we know that Jesus is at work here. We know that something special is happening in this community through this congregation. Something is happening in this village through this church. Something is happening in this neighborhood through this this ministry. I know that you know because you have stopped by my office all week and all month to tell me something special is happening here. Jesus is at work here and Jesus invites you to be a part of this blessing. Jesus invites you to be a part of this good news. Jesus invites you to be a part of blessing this village, of blessing this neighborhood, of blessing this community. Jesus invites you to join your story to his story, to join your actions to his actions to join your life to his life so that when anyone speaks of Jesus they are speaking of your story when anyone tells your story they are telling Jesus story when anyone talks about what Christ is doing in this village they are talking about the work that we are doing in this village Jesus invites you To be a part of something so much bigger than yourself. So much better than you can imagine. So much longer lasting than you might ever dream. Jesus invites you to be a part of the good news of the gospel. And that's why we are here. We are here because the creation around us is so good. Because we we have come to see how God works and because Jesus invites you to be a part of this story. The only thing to do is to run. To tell the people that you know to tell the people that you love to tell the people with whom you share your life that he is risen. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. As we continue our worship this morning, we will do so by bringing our tithes and offerings. Uh, On Easter Sunday, we take part in the one great hour of sharing offering. 
You'll notice there are some special envelopes in the pew if you'd like to be a part of that. You can uh, put your uh, offering in that uh, envelope and write on the memo line that it is part of one great all hour of sharing. All other offerings will go to the ministries of this church. I invite our ushers to come forward. My sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope, with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over. From my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so free washes over. Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell. That's when death was arrested in my life. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, we're free, free forever, we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, we're free, free forever, we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested, my life began. When death was arrested, my life began. When death was arrested, my life I invite you all now to bow your heads and join with me in our responsive prayer this morning. Let us pray. Lord God, as we come to you on this glorious Easter morning, surrounded by flowers with the echoes of songs of praise still in this room, 
Lord, we celebrate who you are and who you have always been to us. Lord, that you have called us before we knew you, that you have loved us before we loved you, and that you provide for us even when we don't notice. And Lord, on this Easter morning, we're reminded of that great resurrection day. Lord, that you overcame death so that we might have life. And this morning, God, as we come here and we continue in our worship, we celebrate all of the places in our lives that you show up and call us and lead us because you love us. Lord, we lift our prayers to you. Lord, hear our prayer. And God, this morning as we are praying as we lift up our voices together, as we worship, Lord, we are grateful for the promise of new life in your resurrection. And Lord, we ask for that new life in every part of our lives. Lord, the, the areas where we struggle to believe, the areas where we have lost hope, the areas where it seems like things don't get better, your promise of resurrection is what continues to lead us on. Lord, we pray for strength, we pray for wisdom, and we pray for your love, not only to wash over us, but to empower us to love our neighbors and even our enemies as you have loved us. Lord, we lift our prayers to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, as we continue to go out into the world as you've commanded us, Lord, to spread the good news of this this Resurrection Day, Lord, of this Easter Sunday, as we speak to our friends and speak to our family and speak to our neighbors about who you are and what you've done, Lord, help us to find the words to convey the goodness. Help us to find the words to convey all that you are doing in our lives. Lord, as we struggle to hope, breathe new life into us that it may overcome our despairs. Lord, as we struggle to believe amidst our doubts, give us the strength in our faith to continue seeking after you, even when we don't understand. And Lord, above all else, give us love, that we might change this world, that we might join you in your kingdom work in our midst to let others know who you are and who you've called us to be. Lord, we lift our prayers to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, this morning we, we come to you knowing that you love us, that you care for us, that you comfort us, and that on this day, especially the promise of Easter, is so important. Lord, we pray for those that are grieving the losses of loved ones in our own community. Lord, we pray for Steve Barge and his family, and the passing of his mother, Sylvie, Lord, we pray for the family and friends of Wayne Croyle Sr. and the family and friends of, of Rob Layton and their recent passings as well. Lord, we celebrate the promise of resurrection, but recognize that here on this side of heaven, grief still abounds. Meet us all in these moments. Help us to know your presence and your spirit. Lord, we pray for your healing upon our friends, Ron and Craig, and Dolly. Lord, we pray for every person in this room, every person streaming online, the requests that weigh heavily on us, Lord. The prayers that we do not speak out loud because they embarrass us or because we can't find the words to convey them. Lord, we read in Scripture that your Spirit meets us and does it for us. Lord, when there are groanings too great for words, that your spirit intercedes for us. So, Lord, this morning we lift up those unspoken concerns as well. And we do this in light of Easter. We do this in light of the resurrection. We do this in faith and hope and love in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and sing with us. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boasts of sin and grace. Are roaring the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. It is that powerful name that has brought us here today. It is that same powerful name that invites your help in blessing this village, this neighborhood, and this community. And so as we go from this place, the first stop is brunch. After each service today, we have, we have food in the Robinson Room, which is just to my, my left, your right. And on your way out, you can pick up one of the uh, booklets about our flowers. And remember, you can grab flowers from the Robinson Room to take home. Our child care room is going to close during the brunch because we want the entire church family together as we eat and as we celebrate Easter. And as we go from this place, remember how beautiful this creation really is. It's life that is permanent. Remember how God works, that God chooses you. God pursues you. God conquered death for you. And remember who you can be. Remember that God invites you to join your story to the story of Easter. So run 
and tell the people you know, tell the people you love, tell the people with whom you share your life. And that is the hard part for us as Presbyterians. This whole evangelism thing makes us really uncomfortable. So here, I, I've got a cheat for you. Here's what you can do. Sometime in the next seven days, tell someone what you experienced this morning. Tell someone why you chose to come at nine o'clock. Tell someone about your favorite song. Tell someone about the flowers. Tell someone about what you loved. Tell someone about what moved you. Tell someone about what drove you nuts. Tell someone about how much the preacher talked too long. Tell someone what you experienced here today. Just open your mouth and let the Spirit do the rest. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may you be a part of that peace. Now and forever. Amen. Run.